Good evening and welcome to Byline. We're here at the Amherst Media Studio and this show is co-sponsored by the Amherst League of Women Voters and Amherst Media. We're taking a break from our usual format in that uh, we have uh, an important conversation that is beginning and accelerating here in the community around the question of uh, school construction for our elementary school children. And uh, so we're doing a two-part series. Tonight, February 8th, is the first part. And on Monday evening, the 11th, will be the second part. And that show will feature our town council president and uh, the chair of the Amherst School Committee. But tonight, we have uh, the chair and one of the two uh, vice chairs of the uh, Fort River uh, School uh, Building Study Committee. Is that roughly the right title of that? Yes. Very good. <laughs> so thank you very much for being here. So we have Jonathan Salvan, who is the chair of the committee. And we have Maria Kopicki, who is one of the two vice chairs. And what we'd like to do is to help the community understand what your mission is, how you came to be, um, what you're doing, how far along are you. So let's just start with uh, how did you get created and sure. what is your charge? So we were created by a, a town meeting in March of 2017. Um, we were We've been actively meeting as a committee since October of 2017, um, and uh, so we're a little over a year into our process um, of, of doing this feasibility study. And the feasibility study is of? It, we are exploring the Fort River School building site and the building itself um, and looking at what's basically feasible uh, with this building when it comes to, or building and site when it comes to what you can do, you know, what range of things can you do on this site uh, for for the students and teachers of Amherst. Yeah, and um, in, in May when, when town meeting uh, voted to approve this, the, the superintendent and the school committee had come to town meeting and said, look, we'd like you to, we'd like this site and school to be studied and see what we can do. Um, and that's exactly what we've been doing since October. And so we have done site analysis, we've done building analysis, and we've come up with multiple options on how you can build a school at the Fort River site for uh, the range in enrollment is 315 to 465 students, and as directed by the, the school committee. Um, and uh, yeah, we have five different options that meet all of those criteria. Very good. And uh, is it just um, looking at uh, architectural and engineering type of elements, or are there other uh, pieces to this puzzle? Certainly there are other pieces to the puzzle um, in that broad span of time that we've, we've been working as a committee. Um, we've really only been working with the designers since about August. Um, prior to that, um, we were contracting for um, geotechnical borings. We were uh, getting a survey underway. We did some air quality testing. Did I miss anything? I, that's, a, that's it. Those are, those are kind of the big pre-meeting um, with designer steps that we've taken. Um, and then once we hired the designers, we worked with them uh, initially to work on a draft educational program, um, which Maria alluded to. That's how we kind of got to our target population. There was certainly guidance from the school committee that it was pre-K through six. Um, and, and mostly three sections, or intended to be three sections per grade. Um. But it involved talking, uh, the designers and members of the committee, speaking with uh, educational staff members to find out what would need to be in this building, so to do basically a space summary. Mm -hmm. um, and largely, um, that would be how we developed the educational plan. What we were doing in our process was largely mirroring the initial phases of a feasibility study that would have been would be conducted uh, with the MSBA so um, in addition to that educational component we um, and the geotechnical and survey and and air quality testing uh, once we had designers on board we then they didn't then had their consultants do extensive analysis of the structure of uh, all the engineering components um, and 
uh, we are at the point right now where they have developed out a total of six um, uh, design options that range from completely new construction to various degrees of renovation, mm -hmm. plus a code upgrade option. And we're in the midst of still working on cost estimates. Uh, that's a long process. Um, but we've made a great deal of progress to, to show what could you do. Mm -hmm. And the nature of the final product, work product of the committee is a report. Is a feasibility it's study a report. a feasibility that's study correct. report. And it will detail what is possible on the site and a variety of visions for what a building on that site might look like. That's correct. And it's pegged around a student body that's roughly the size of the current student body, or is it larger? It, it's slightly increased, um, you know, today, you know, the, the school population at Fort Rivers has, have shifted over time. Um, but today, not all grades have three sections. Most of them are, in fact, two sections. Um, but we, knowing what was happening um, within the, the, the school system, um, we anticipated that with uh, the dual language program starting up, that in all likelihood, a more realistic population for Fort River would, in fact, be three, three sections per grade. Um, and just to touch a little bit on something that Maria uh, mentioned a moment ago, um, while we're, you know, this was, our committee was created kind of between um, MSBA processes. Yes. And so we're not, we're not actively engaged in one as part of our work, um, but we modeled that process and tried to focus on how a feasibility study would be conducted and looked at um, if it were MSBA process, so that we would have that best comparable data to the data the town already had on the other site that's been looked at in town. And the other site being the Wildwood, Wildwood site. Right. Yeah, so for our listeners, uh, there was a study, a similar study done earlier, and that was uh, at the, with regard to the Wildwood site. So by doing this study, both of those sites will be essentially in the same position in terms of the community considering what could take place on each of those sites. Right. Yeah, the previous, the previous study did consider the Fort River site as a possible location as, as well. However, the Fort River School had not been extensively studied and there hadn't been as detailed work at the Fort River site. I see, okay. And is that because we learned something from having done that previous study that we needed to go deeper or what, what what changed? In terms of why? Why, Fort, you, why do we go deeper on Fort River uh, than Wildwood? It, it, had, it had not been studied as, uh, to the same level. I see. So they are now kind of caught up. Mm -hmm. when, right. this, when your work is completed and the report is submitted, they will truly be on eva, uh, equal footing with regard to considering each of those sites. Yes. Yeah, so and, and varying terrific. options to, to look at. Yeah, yeah. good. And so uh, this is not wasted effort in view of the fact that we have another process oh, going, absolutely going not. forward I mean, now. I think we're, we're, we're producing a, 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 an array of data, <laughs> to, to put it in those kind of terms, that, that should be applicable to any process that we go through next as a community. Um, you know, whether it is something very technical like a geotechnical report or uh, something a, a little bit more design oriented about how, how do you adapt a, an open classroom building. Mm -hmm. So let's see, uh, you're an architect and a parent. Yes. And you're a former medical uh, professional. You were a doctor. Yes. And uh, you're now uh, a uh, scientist. You're in a lab yes. at Amherst College, and yes. you have children in the yes. schools. Eric Nakajima is on the committee as well. Yep. He's, uh, he's the chair of our regional school committee, and he's the other co-vice chair, yeah. sort of, yes. of, yes. of your panel. Yeah. Who are the other members? Oh, I hope I don't miss anyone. <laughs> I'm sure <laughs> and, and we will. And uh, who they are. Sure. Because it would be helpful for the community to know uh, what kinds of minds are at yep. the table. And also, if you happen to know them and you have an opinion and you bump into them at the grocery store, you, you know who to talk to. Well, Dr. Morris sits in the committee in a non-voting capacity yep. um, and as uh, superintendent of schools. Diane Chamberlain, um, the principal of Fort River, uh, sits uh, on our in our <laughs> sits on our committee and is a voting member. Um, and every now else I'll mention is, is a voting member. Um, we have uh, another parent of uh, a Fort River or two more parents of Fort River students, um, uh, Heather Shelton and uh, Allison Page. 
Uh, we have a, a school staff person, uh, Benjamin Harrington, Harrington sorry. <laughs> Um, who am I forgetting now in our great big, oh, we have another parent in the, the school system, a parent who has a child or children um, at uh, Wildwood, that's Irina. Duchovny. Thank you, I can't do that <laughs> pronunciation quite as well as you can. Um, we have a, uh, we have Rudy Perkins, who uh, is, is filling a role of sort of a, as an expert in, or I don't know if the right word is expert, or at least a person with a background in, in uh, the zero energy uh, Mm -hmm. Perspective. Oh, uh, uh, and I think I've been uh, no, no, And Anthony Delaney, oh, who's I'm a procurement yes. officer uh, for, uh, the for the town, the and yeah. uh, oh, for, the we, town. for the town, and uh, the, the the various roles that that people are filling were defined by the school committee when they formed right. it, and so okay. they wanted somebody with uh, to represent the town from a financial okay. financial Excellent. perspective. We, we do have a couple of open seats um, for for much of our work. Uh, the town, um, the facilities. Uh, director participated, but that's an open, open, well, I think it's been recently filled, but that's been an open slot. Um, and we don't currently have a, an active uh, faculty uh, member as part okay. of our committee. Uh, but that is yet, it will be filled, refilled? Presumably. I mean, part of this depends on how quickly they, how quickly they fill the roles and yeah. how much longer we're active as a committee, too. Got it, so. Got it. so let's talk about uh, community engagement, because yep. uh, that's obviously an important part of uh, any process here in town. So you you will reach a point at which you will go to the public, and I understand you've reached that point. We, we have reached that and, point, And yes. uh, tell us about what uh, what that program looks like sure. and how people engage with you. Well, certainly anyone is always welcome to come to our, one of our committee meetings, and that's an when opportunity. When are they held and where? They're typically Wednesdays, and they're typically at the police station community room. They're not every Wednesday. They're usually every other Wednesday. So we just met this Wednesday. We'll meet again probably in two is weeks. Is there a website or something? Yes, there yes. is a website. So, yeah, the, we have a website that's linked through the, the town website. You can okay. find us there. So go and, to the town website and... And we have we have made every effort to get as all of our information up there. So all of our Excellent. documents are up there, our minutes. And um, thank you to Amherst Media and volunteers for Amherst Media who um, we arranged to have film all of our meetings. Yeah. And so Terrific. that is, people can tune in. Yeah. Beautiful. But so uh, people can watch those on uh, Amherst Media YouTube yes. or on their website, um, yes. and uh, and uh, you probably don't have that up on the town website, right? There's links to it through. There our, are links. Yes. Okay, terrific. So you can catch up if you're new to town, or if you've uh, decided it's caught your attention and you want to go back and view some of them. You can see all of the meetings from the beginning. Absolutely. That is correct. Beautiful. So uh, talk some more about the. Uh, uh, engagement process that you're uh, launching at this point. Coming up next week um, on the 13th, February 13th at 6:30, we're holding a community meeting in the middle school auditorium um, to kind of again do a little bit of what we're doing tonight, kind of present the the history of the committee, um, what we've been working on, and to get feedback um, on the. the the work product of our feasibility study. You know, mm -hmm. are, are we asking the right questions? Are we gathering the right information? Have we looked at the right things? So that's on the 13th. That's on the 13th. We're planning to hold one more. Um, we're still working on a final time and date, um, and we'll, we will post that very soon, as soon as we get a chance to and finalize. And in the meantime, you, they can also, the public can also attend your meetings yes. and, and yes. follow the progress there. Do you have a public comment period? Yes. We do. Okay. It's typically it's fairly early in the early in, in the, the meeting. Meeting, yep. Okay. Although we have entertained questions yes. during during our meetings as well yep. from the public. The other thing is that we have been to one PGO, uh, one of the elementary school PGOs, and we'll be presenting at the other two, and are happy to come speak to anybody. Very good. And uh, how can people um, most constructively contribute to the conversation? How much of this is technical? How much of this is what I want for my child or my theory of education? Uh, how, do, how do they constructively contribute to this work, right. uh, given your charge? Well, and I don't think it's particularly technical. Um, what we want to know uh, is, is, are we thinking, confirm that we are thinking about the right things, um, looking at the right uh, items to provide the best information to the town? Um, and make sure that we're as compatible and as, as equal, as you kind of talked earlier, about where we're bringing the information on Fort River to where the, the information was in the Wildwood project. Mm -hmm. 
Very good. Any additional thoughts on that? Um, yeah, I mean, I think the, 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 we would love to hear from any members of the public. I think what we are tasked to do is to answer two questions. Can you build on this site and tell us what you could do with a school of this size? This size? Um, and I think we, we, we're answering those two questions. The answer is yes, and come see the different options, and, and please tell us what you think about them. and. Uh, tell us what you think about any other parts of the process because we will be incorporating mm -hmm. that information mm -hmm. into our final product. So uh, upon completion of your public engagement component, you will be taking all of those comments and, and everything that you've learned into consideration and you will then be working to produce a final product. Do you have an estimated timetable for completing the work? We, we need to sit down with our design team and, and actually establish that final timeline. Um, I don't think we're terribly far off, um, but most of the, the writing work will, will be done by the design professionals. Um, and so we do have to have a, a conversation with them um, about what that, that timetable should look like. So uh, the uh, effort that's being made by the school committee in relation to uh, Superintendent Morris's uh, uh, concept that he put on the table. I'm trying not to use the word proposal because it makes it feel like there's a school that we're right. talking about. He has established parameters. These are the five or six key things that he hopes the community will come to general agreement about mm -hmm. so that the community will rally behind those concepts and get us to the school building assistance program and then come back to the community with a green light from, him, uh, from the school building assistance program to proceed with the feasibility and moving to actually talking about specific school in a specific place of a specific size and design, et cetera. Mm -hmm. So um, your, their timetable, uh, as uh, I understand it, is that they will, uh, the school committee will finish its work in the middle of March, the town council at the beginning of April, so that we can meet an April 12th deadline at school building assistance. Let's overlay what you think might be happening with your timetable in relation to that. Where do you think, for example, you folks might be in your process approximately April 1? Or we'll, we'll be finishing up. I mean, we'll be getting there, I would anticipate. We are, are going to have to meet more um, and finalize the budget discussion. Um, we need to have a f some final conversations about what the consultants found in their analysis of the existing building and site. Um, but in the end, our work is going to inform that that sort of next conversation mm -hmm. um, because we're again more than this current conversation. It's going to be the next right. conversation because that's where that comparison, that yeah. that that uh, dual use or mutual use of data, is going to be valuable. At least that's that's my perspective. That's how you see it. Yeah, yeah. Maria? I mean, yeah our job was really our job was to provide information, right. and we're putting some fine points on it. I think we largely have. Um, that information, we're going to be fine-tuning it, um, getting it as accurate as we can, but... Um, so it's important for the community to understand that you're information gatherers, digesters, and reporters, as opposed to making specific recommendations. The recommendations come later right. as a result of SBA saying... And okay, really another process. And a whole different right. process, but using your information as part of that process. That's right. That's terrific. So sometime this spring, probably, we're going to see a report come out of, out of the committee. Where does the report go? So we, we take our work, we present it to the school committee, um, and that's really the sunset of our, our committee's work. Um, you know, obviously, if there are edits we need to make, uh, we'll do that. But... Um, we don't go past this feasibility study level. Very good. Any additional thought on that, Maria? Um, uh, we uh, have heard some questions from town council that you know they would might be interested in hearing our work, and we are obviously you know that's so the town we can uh, do the too. new body, our new legislature. So that would make sense for you to come and make a presentation there at some point. Yeah, we, um, our, our, our task was to report to the school committee, yeah. but it certainly makes sense to, to talk to whoever wants to hear the information that we've gathered. Mm -hmm. Do you uh, think that members of your panel are going to uh, be consciously and actively engaged in the public process that's going on with the school committee and the 
the uh, town council at this point with regard to the bigger picture or are people so focused on this task and there's so much work to be done that you think people are mostly going to stay uh, on task here as opposed to uh, uh, trying to engage in, in the other part? You mean as committee members? Uh, well, either as committee members or as residents of the community. I think as committee members, we need to focus on our on task because yeah. um, we do have a bit of work to do and everyone's got their own opinions. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I can't say, you know, as the chair, uh, whether people engage at certain levels at that other process. Mm -hmm. Great. Are there other comments or things that my questions haven't elicited that should be uh, put on the table so that the viewers can understand more about what you're doing. Uh, if not, then I'm going to take us off in a slightly different direction. But I want to make sure that we've covered the entire terrain of what you need to and hope to communicate to our neighbors here in town with regard to your effort. I think you've done a good job encapsulating. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So um, we have a, you know another five minutes or so. So yep. I'd like to explore with you a little bit if, if you have some thoughts as parents in town of what the nature of a, of a school building should be going forward. Right. Because we've lived with these schools for 50 years. Uh, as far as I know, everybody I've ever met is an expert on education because we all got one. <laughs> That's true. And so um, it's really a challenge to get outside of your own experience and think about what education, the education for the future looks like and therefore what our buildings should be looking like. So I'm assuming you had some conversation about that in this process and I'm curious whether you can share any of that without, you know, this isn't positions of the committee. It's just some observations about what a school building of the future needs to be able to do or accommodate or look like. Well, it's interesting, you know, during our process, one of the first things that, that, that we talked about is how, how do we need to be guided? And we came up with a list of non-negotiable items that mm -hmm. we had heard. And I, I think that um, I'd, I'd like to state with yeah, uh, how good. the committee looks at it. Um, um, we were tasked with finding a solution to the building problems that solve a number of issues. Eliminating open classroom design, making sure that there is good acoustics, good air quality, natural light, accessibility, safety. Um, I'm uh, oh, uh, providing cost estimates that consider all the costs that would be involved, including operational costs. Mm -hmm. Help me out, Jonathan. No, I, I, I feel that, like I'm that, missing that, that some. The, well, we have to hit the net zero. Net by zero, net zero yes. by be, com, being yeah. compliant. So life cycle costing of yeah. operating the building, which would include the energy. And also, what you know, this this would be the first building that we municipal building that would be complying with with the net zero bylaw, and there's a a lot of uh, decision making and options that go into that and so we've explored that mm -hmm. deeply um, and that I think guided us through this process so that the options that we are providing meet all of those criteria. Um, so we have three buildings in town that were built that I'm remembering in the last five years or so. The Hitchcock Center for the Environment, the um, design building, the over design building at UMass mm -hmm and a building at Hampshire College, which were all net zero. Uh, I think uh, the UMass one was net zero energy, but at least all three of them involved wood construction, mm. which is going, it's, what is that, back to the future, <laughs> where you know everything used to be built uh, with wood, and then we went to brick, and then it's a lot of steel, et cetera. Um, was there any discussion about the types of materials that might be used in the construction of school or alternative construction methods that are forward-looking rather than um, what you would traditionally see in a public school building. So I'm going to put on my architect's hat yes. because during, <laughs> during the day, <laughs> that yeah. is my day job, um, and, and say, no, we didn't, and, and didn't get into quite that level of detail, um, primarily because we are a feasibility study committee. Okay. And some of those decisions really come, come later. Um, but kind of thinking both as an architect and as a parent, um, and as a parent, I'm just kind of blown away by the quality of the, the, the teaching that gets done in our schools, mm -hmm. regardless of their, of their condition. I mean, I think we have a fabulous set of professionals in this community. Um, but getting back to what Maria was saying about, you know, light-filled, um, <laughs> non-open, um, 
I do personally like the notion of, of wood, and you know, but there are a, a wide range of, uh, of aesthetics that achieve mm -hmm. um, the goal of, of, a, of a modern 21st century school, yeah. um, but they tend to be decisions that are further downstream, not just yeah. of our feasibility study, but, but of any, pro any project. That's something that the architects uh, would kind of present to the community, um, you know, and, and walk through the community through what does your school really want to feel and be like. Um, and it, it gets to a lot more than just, okay, how, how many boxes of, of, of uh, classrooms that are XYZ size. Mm -hmm. um, and so in, re in reality, there's, there's an amazing opportunity the community has as part of a new building ultimately to affect uh, just the sort of things you've been talking about. Yeah, you know, one of the reasons that we picked the designers that we did to yeah. help us with this is that they had that perspective and they, yeah. they, they are very conscious of the kind of materials. In addition, they have experience not only renovating open classrooms, but also they have deep experience with green energy and with net zero and so uh, they brought that to the table. A lot of those other, those fine much more fine-tuned decisions are something that would happen far later in a building process, more mm -hmm. in, in schematic design. Right. But they certainly, uh, our designers certainly approached it with an eye toward that. Well, it was very interesting to me because I had some involvement with the design building because they had designed a traditional mm -hmm. construction. And then John Olver um, said, how can you build a building that is going to house our natural resources programs? without considering wood at this point. Mm -hmm. And uh, he convinced the university, and I, I worked with them, to uh, uh, do the transition from where they were to the, it was only, uh, they, ha they had to do some redesign, mm -hmm. but they were able to do the construction costs, as I understand it, within the existing budget mm -hmm. that they had um, done. So it's not a wild, it's not a totally wild, crazy thing. Uh, and we are a, a forested state about Somewhere around, uh, somewhere I'm going to say it's 40 to 60 percent of our land is forested, yep. and uh, it'd be really um, interesting to see if we could add over time to this uh, momentum around uh, natural design and construction. And with that, I want to thank you both for being with us, and I want to thank all of our listeners for watching tonight. So uh, remember, this is a two-part series. Uh, on Monday evening, you will see the second part of this conversation. Uh, about our conversation here in town about building new schools uh, for our children. And uh, we'll have uh, Lynn Griesmer, the town council president, and Anastasia Ordinez, who is the uh, school committee chair, uh, will continue this conversation and talk about their process leading to a uh, decision on uh, filing an application potentially on April 12th for another round. So. Hope you'll all engage in this process. It's a second bite at the apple. We have another chance to go back to the School Building Assistance Program in Boston and get our fair share of state funds to improve school building here in our town. And we want to thank you guys for your service on the Fort River uh, Building Planning Study <laughs> Committee, something like that. And uh, thank you all again <laughs> for being with us. Thank you. Have a good night.